What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. Now what I'm noticing as I'm digging that is that the pump there is not running. We're supposed to be clearing that to make room. I'm not sure what for, but just make room in general. And then you can see that the whole polluted water is backed up. Because the storage canister is full. Now that's a problem because all of the toilets... I don't think I have showers. So just the toilets. They will stop working, of course, and then people will pee themselves and it will go all over the base. So, chucking down another storage thing there. That will allow them to, or allow the polluted water to continue to go into the second one. Eventually, we'll, of course, uh, move this out of here and use it to get sieved. And through the sieves in the game, they use sand and it produces clean water. There's a lot of water here and we will need it and later on you always find you need it. I'm not going to use it for calling or anything along them lines, I don't think. What I am going to use it for is, of course, the duplicates. It's a given. And maybe electrolysis if needed. I don't. I can't really think of a better option of getting oxygen, if I'm honest. There are plants you can do it with, but it's not that efficient. And, yeah, I think water, because we can steal water from other asteroids, even if we just make that our only mission, right, to go to asteroids to get water, and then the water is used as oxygen. We don't have to go to asteroids and necessarily turn them into giant colonies. Though you will need a small amount of infrastructure to keep the duplicates that are on the new asteroids alive firstly because they're going to have to dig out these giant areas unless we do it with the minor bots but the minor bots can't dig a lot of the harder materials that will be in the way it'd be nice if the cord because you could go to any asteroid get them to dig it out so that every every bit of water falls into one sort of spot whether it be normal water, polluted water, brine, salt water. And then we could just pump that straight back. And desalinate it for the brine and the salt water. Obviously a sieve for the polluted water. And then the water water is just straight into the storage. Still doing some wiring up now for the water water. And I'm not sure why water water saying it twice means that it's the blue one. Just normal water, right? So what this is actually going to do is drain that tank to the new tank, which is the one on the left. But it's 50-50 split on the pipe, how that pipe is set up. So as you can see, I'm already fixing this because that's no good. I want all the water to move to the second new tank on the left. And then the water that is required for the base will go out and up, as you can see. So what I need to do is break that there and that... Yes, that's done. As soon as that one is broken on the right, we'll rip it out and then make a better flooring in place. Why did I do that? I've got no idea. Oh, to allow it to do a 50-50 split. I'm not entirely sure why I did that. That makes no sense. Logically, looking at that, that was a waste of time. Don't do that. Just, just put it straight into your new container and then it will come straight out of the new container to where you want it to go. If you have any surplus, then it will back up in the new container and eventually you will move the water and that is the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. So in terms of the critters and the automatic processing of the eggs, as you can see, it's happening here, but they're not being picked up automatically. And that is because the up arrow, which is the mod that allows you to separate the two, needs to be set at zero for it to trigger the actual um, duplicates to come and fetch him. So basically it's looking for an actual number of what is allowed in that room. So the idea is that you would have it also in your farms. So in the, uh, the, the original game where you can only have a maximum of five or six uh, critters per farm, you would have it in there, set it to five or six, whatever the limit is. I think it's, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's five, can't remember. Anyway. Um, and then as soon as six appears, or seven, depending on what you set it on, it then gets somebody to come and fetch them so that they can't get over. And that way it makes it so that you 
don't get overcrowded and it's automated. Now I'm using it just in there to say zero, so as soon as an animal or critter hatches, they're immediately picked up and taken to their representative rooms. The rooms allow 40 because of the mod. Of course, any more than 40 and the crowding will happen again. Now, realistically, I'm not looking at getting more than that. There, is, there are enough eggs that I could increase the critter population much higher. But at the minute, I'm running at around 20 for the hatchers, and that seems to be okay. Of course, remember, the sage hatchers, the green ones, are going to be canned and binned. Whether we have some already, I'll eat them, and if we have the eggs, I will eat those too. Yummy, yummy. And then the hatchers and the stone hatchers are the ones that will be farmed, moving into the smooth hatchers and eventually the diamond hatchers. Bit of base expansion now, just to make sure I have rooms where I'm needed. I am getting close to requiring another bathroom. And I really need to get some showers in as well. Because I haven't put the showers in still. Um, and it just gives them a mood, bu uh, mood buff boost. Whatever. Overlay on the base is looking nice. That bottom section is a bit awkward. We need to get some of that chlorine out. But really, if we push the... If we open up the hole at the bottom of the base, it will switch. So you can see that chasm that we've created does have oxygen trapped in there and that is because originally it was polluted oxygen and I put some of the filters in that will clean it that then will rise because obviously the the carbon dioxide is heavier than the oxygen and push it up but with one gap one square one tile uh, it's a very slow process you want to open it up as best you can you want at least three or four tiles in terms of space if you want the gases to flow up and down a bit more efficiently um, it's not there is pressure in the game of course gas pressure but when everything's about the same it just it's pretty stagnant even if the gases are heavier and lighter so you need to give it a bit of a helping hand I would suggest so no surprises for what I am doing next that area that I was clearing out I've decided it's going to be my new power area if you look when we zoom out a little bit you will see I've just kind of chucked it anywhere and everywhere in the the room above where the teleporters were so I would have shut down a very basic coal refinery type situation it's basically just nine nine coal generators that will all be run by the duplicants yes it will get warm in there I know this um, and there'll be a lot of carbon dioxide too but it should be manageable because it will be automated so they won't be on all the time and if they were they would overheat and break and that would be a problem and then we'd have duplicates going in there and it's too hot etc but because it's automated as long as I give enough battery storage the more battery storage you have the longer the generators will be off for so you can kind of control it crudely like that so for now I've got the two jumbo batteries connected to one smart battery but if I increase that amount, say double it, then of course the, uh, the when they turn off the generators, they will be off for twice as long. Because it waits until all of the power is totally drained from the smart battery and then it triggers them to switch on again. Now, using nine generators is going to be costly on the coal. We are producing coal through the hatches, but I'm not convinced that the math says that it is equal to what we're doing. I do genuinely think that these nine generators will eat it a lot quicker than we're making it, but then obviously they do stop as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on the number of coal. Currently at 23 tons, is that? Yes. 23 tons of coal, so we'll keep an eye on that number. If it starts drastically dropping, we know we have to do something, i.e. mine some more up, because we haven't really touched the, the, the asteroid too much. There is still a lot to get, I'm sure. We've not run out of coal and we're just surviving on the hatches now. There is plenty to dig up, along with the algae and a few other things as well. Even the iron ores and the uh, copper ore. Now, as you can see, there's two, four, six there just randomly placed. I'll rip those out as soon as this setup is complete. And that means that I can do that now. I have surrounded it with insulated tile just to try and help keep that heat as down as much as possible whether that's not obviously going to be a permanent feature or fixture and I want it to 
not cause too much heat aggro around. Both of them teleporters, now they are by themselves, will be moved. I will use the uh, movement tool. I'm pretty sure I've researched that already to move those. You've seen that in previous ones. If you're not sure how to use them, by the way, and you've tried it before, please do let me know. I can do a run-through of that because I think that's about the only mod I haven't done a run-through for from my previous seasons. But it's nice and simple. It was a lot more complex before they did the update on it. Now it's just a case of you build the, uh, the, the, the machine, which looks like the World Cup trophy, if I'm honest. It's like a... Yeah, it just looks like the World Cup trophy. The football, soccer, World Cup trophy. And then you just have to make sure you have whatever you want to move. You have to click on it and uh, research it. I can't remember what the word is now. But there's a word. Survey, that's it. And as soon as you survey it, it then appears in the list on that new um, trophy style thing. And then all you do is click move it, click where it needs to go, and boom, it moves. Uh, previously, you had to wait for somebody to do it, and it was a bit more convoluted, but now it's better. Welcome back. Has been a few cycles, and uh, as you can see on the right hand side there where the incubators are and it's getting warm, I have moved those across now. The power station you can see above that is very red, which means it's warm, but it's okay, it's not too hot. Uh, and the farms, of course, there, the Drecker farm on the bottom right is warming up too. So I have moved everything over to this side. They are segregated, and there is a vacuum all the way around. That pump there, its job is to take out any gases. Now, realistically, I would expect that it will stay as a vacuum now. There's no reason why it wouldn't. I have got sealed doors. But the duplicates keep farting, and that creates natural gas. They keep doing it in the vacuum, which, of course, then fills the vacuum with natural gas. So all I've got is that pump that's there that needs to be plumbed in a bit better into a storage tank. And it's just going to constantly rip out any gases that do get in there. And move them even if you have a small amount of gas in there it still works quite well as a barrier for the temperatures so like hydrogen it's the same we know that hydrogen is the best at transferring heat but if you have a minuscule like micrograms of hydrogen it's not that good if you have five kilos of hydrogen it does it very well it's very efficient so keeping the gas to a vacuum or micrograms still has the same effect of course micrograms will allow transfer not like a vacuum, which is just never. Um, but it still should help. Also, keeping these rooms then individually segregated and insulated, I can cool them or heat them as I need. Now, it's going to be cool them because none of these need to be heated. I expect to gain excess heat. The Drecos give off a lot of heat, the actual critters themselves. So any room you have a Dreco in will eventually warm up. You're talking probably 35 to 40 degrees, nothing silly high like what oil and petroleum give off, which is why a glossy Draco is still definitely the way to go. We have the two bottom farms for that. So the very bottom farm will be the Drecos, the standard Drecos. The one above that will be the glossy Drecos. Above that, the one I'm working on now is for the shine bugs. Just the standard shine bugs. We're not hatching the sun eggs. We're just collecting the eggs. Um, the shine bugs, of course, and the shine bug eggs will be hatched. The one above that, which is the one directly above on the bottom of the screen, but above the incubators, is for hatches only. And then finally, a one above that. So, top of the screen now is going to be for the stone hatches and any of the other hatches that we morph. Obviously, sage hatches, if we do have any, will be moved there for now, but then we'll be turning to food. So that will be for stone, smooth, and diamond hatches, eventually. The very, very top one, then, that I'm not going to set up just yet, but I will at some point, is for poke shells. And they are the crab-looking things that give you lime from their shells. So, this is how I'm doing it for now. Again, Drecos, this is the first time I'm doing them in this way. It seems to be working. We'll know better when we get the Glossy Drecos. We do have eggs in the incubator of Glossy Drecos. None of them have hatched yet. I am not going to touch those. I'll rip out the old incubators when they have been used up or if they're not being used. And as soon as they finish, anything that's already mid-processing, especially the Glossy Dreco eggs, will be left alone. Speed up that process there. That way we have our main base then that is on its own. 
Outside of that, on the right, we have the power spine, which needs to be moved over a couple of blocks. I would like to try and get a vacuum gap between there, or at least a gas gap. There you go. So there's your three glossy Dreco eggs. They're on the way. I'm not going to can those just yet. The other reason as well that you need to be careful with your glossy Drecos, or any Drecos actually, including the ones you can see on the screen now, is that because they raise the heat, they also make it so you can't grow mealwood in there pen indefinitely eventually they will overheat it and as soon as it hits 30 degrees the mealwood will not grow and there's two ways around that you can grow bristle uh, bristle berries they also eat uh, they can go a little bit warmer i can't remember the number but they can go warmer alternatively you just feed them the actual fruit directly from the plant so you harvest the plant like you would for your duplicates and then you just put them in one of them feeder things and do it that way which realistically is probably a much better way of doing it it also clears up floor space and the floor space we can use then for the little i don't know what you call them but the little toys that they sit in and make them even happier and containers or things like that the, the growing the farms um it doesn't require anything of course so it is pretty cheap to do that because the water is done by the actual farm tile but it's just not practical because then you have to do a whole cooling system to keep that cool for them to grow when you can just grow them elsewhere which is a lot easier to do and then bring them in and feed them to them with the feeder some very simple plumbing now for the gases so the rooms that the critters are in and where i'm moving them to i'm just basically stealing the gas so what it will do is for the Dreco room, it will steal the hydrogen and the carbon dioxide that's in that room or, or oxygen and chuck it into the two Dreco rooms. For the hatches, whatever's in their rooms, it will steal and put in there. Because this side, currently the gases in there are no good. It's mostly very small amounts, micrograms of chlorine. But once I get the gases from the actual rooms, you can see there the hatches is oxygen and the Drecos looks like hydrogen and carbon dioxide. So we'll get that pumped over. It will settle itself out automatically again. The hydrogen will go to the top, oxygen or carbon dioxide to the bottom. And as soon as the gases are in the rooms that I'm comfortable with, I'll then pull the trigger on doing a mass move. Now I'm going to do the room by room. Uh, the hatches will likely be first because there's more of them. Okay, here we go. So I am ready to get the hatches moved now. And again, remember that the they will be separated ever so slightly. Currently, we have all of the hatches and the sunshine bugs. No, just the shine bugs. Yep. The shine bugs all in one room. They are going to be split out. So the standard hatches will be in one room. The shine bugs will be in one room. And then all of the other hatches, which currently are sage and stone, will be in another room. So as soon as the ranchers come over, we now have three qualified ranchers. Uh, I do want some more, but for now, we'll be okay. So you can see in there, they have gone through and indeed wrapped up. Now, annoyingly, you can't really do the level 10 urgency for picking them up and actually moving them. It just doesn't seem to be an option. You can use the move them tool and do it that way, but that just seems rubbish. Anyway, let's come over now. You can see a couple of the sage hatches have arrived. They are doing it. Them sacks there, you can see, are actual critters. So they are moving them over. And we just want to get them moved over to their rightful rooms. As soon as they're finished, we will then, of course, do the same for the Drecos. Nails is joining us as well. Okay, we'll go straight into Nails. And you are going to be another rancher. So there is our fourth rancher of the process we'll go down make sure that he has ranching pr top priority and then as always farming second priority because all ranchers are farmers when there's no critters to look after and so but surely we are getting these guys moved over you can see now about seven or eight of the normal hatches are over we're about halfway on those and then above you can see the stone and sage hatches are in their rooms retrospectively i have switched the foods out now so the food in the stone and sage hatches is the ores because of course i want my stone hatches to eat ores to turn them into smooth hatches the sage ones again will be hot dogs i'm going to eat those so no problems there 
all of these rooms and the incubator rooms will need to have the sweepers fitted for automations. I'm not going to be moving eggs around and various other things. I will do that automatically, but it's going to be in another episode, as is the Dreco move as well. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, join us on Discord. Subscribe for more. Like if you like. Take care. Goodbye.